Welcome back. I want to talk about document fingerprinting and Microsoft 365 compliance. And so I created a PowerPoint presentation derived directly from the official documentation to walk you through it. And so feel free to utilize this with your customers or within your organization. I'll provide a link in the video description where you can download it. Let's get started. So what is document fingerprinting? Document fingerprinting is a data loss prevention feature in Microsoft 365 that converts a standard text form into a sensitive information type, which you can use in the rules of your DLP policies. So for example, you can create a document fingerprint based on a blank template, then create a DLP policy that detects and blocks all outgoing documents that use that template when there's sensitive content filled in. So some additional examples here, obviously government forms. You know, I like to think about uh, court filings, court forms, uh, legal. Maybe it's in healthcare. So anything that has you know, patient information, like an x-ray form or something, uh, prescriptions. Uh, human resources is actually a really popular one, at least with the organizations I work with, where they want to protect uh, employee uh, performance data and that kind of thing, and where anytime there's PII there. And then the beauty of this is really any kind of custom form that you might create for your organization. So the other cool thing about this, and I'll do another video all about policy tips because I think this is actually pretty fascinating. Uh, you can create a policy tip, which means when a user is working with one of these forms and they start to fill in the sensitive data, well, it starts to match that fingerprint, right? And then it displays as policy tip as a banner here that you can then be alerted as the end user. So you can have it, you know, say different things and then the end user can override it. And the whole idea is that they understand they're gonna that they're using something that has sensitive data and hey, be smart about it, right? Okay, so how does this thing work? Well, in the same way that a person's fingerprints have unique patterns, documents also have unique word patterns. So when you upload a file, the DLP service identifies a unique word pattern in the document, and then the service creates a document fingerprint based on that pattern, and then it uses the document fingerprint to detect outbound documents containing the same pattern. So the benefits of this is obviously anyone who fills out a form uses the same original set of words and then adds their own words to the document. And as long as that outbound document isn't password protected and contains all the text from the original form, DLP can determine if the document matches the document fingerprint. Now, I know what you're thinking, but Matt, what if the document is password protected? Well, that's where defense in depth comes in, and there's other solutions for that. And we'll talk more about that in other videos, like sensitivity labels and MCAS and so on and so forth. Okay, let's talk about an example of this. So here we have an example of a patent document matching a document fingerprint of a patent template. So the patent template contains the blank fields, such as patent title, inventors, and description. And then there's a description for each of those fields in the document, and that's the word pattern. When you upload that original template to the service, it's in one of the supported file types and it's in plain text, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. DLP then converts that word pattern into a document fingerprint, which is basically a small Unicode XML file containing a unique hash value representing the original text, and the fingerprint is saved as a data classification in Microsoft 365, and more on that in a moment. Now, I need to point this out because it's really important. As a security measure, the original document itself is not stored in the service, okay? So the document, the, the template is not being stored at all in the cloud. Only the hash value is stored. And the original document can't be reconstructed from that hash value, so that's very important. The patent fingerprint then becomes a sensitive information type that you can associate with a DLP policy. So when you do all of this, it actually creates a sense of information type with that document fingerprint inside of it. Now, after you associate the fingerprint with a DLP policy, DLP detects any outbound emails containing documents that match that fingerprint and then deals with them according to your policy. So another example of this, you might want to set up a DLP policy that prevents regular employees from sending outgoing messages containing patents. So DLP uses the patent fingerprint to detect those patents and block those emails. Now, alternatively, you might want to let your legal department to be able to send those patents to other organizations because it has a business justification for doing so. And so you can also allow specific departments to send sensitive information by creating an exception process for those departments in the DLP policy, and then you can allow them to override a, with a policy tip and require business justification. And I'll talk more about that when I do another video all about DLP. 
So what are the supported file types? It's actually the same as mail transport rules and exchange online. And you could see what some of the supported file types are here, such as PDFs and office documents and images. Now, what are the limitations of document fingerprinting? This is really important. Currently, at the time of this video, and at the time the official documentation was written, Microsoft 365 DLP can use document fingerprinting as a detection method in Exchange Online only. That means this does not work, at least right now, with things like Endpoint DLP. Now, there's one exception to this, and that's using Microsoft's CASB, Microsoft Cloud App Security. I'm gonna do another video all about fingerprints and MCAS, so stay tuned for that. The other thing I want you to realize, and I don't know if it's so much of a limitation, but .dotx, that's a template file type in Word. That file type's not supported. So you don't wanna actually upload the actual template, you wanna save it as a document first and then upload that. Document fingerprinting won't detect sensitive information in the following cases, password protected files, but again, defense in depth, there's other solutions for that. Files that contain only images, so that's important to know. And then documents that don't contain all the text from the original form used to create the document fingerprint. So what I'm trying to say here is when you go to design this and you start to consider your own organization's requirements and all that stuff, I want you to take a step back for a moment and ask yourself, what are we trying to do and why are we trying to do it? Is fingerprinting the right solution or not? Is it going to achieve the results we want to achieve? Or do we maybe need to do some modifications with some of our forms and the templates that we want to use to make sure that they're supported? So I just want you to think about that as you go through this. Okay, so let's jump into this a little bit deeper. So here we have a document template that I've saved as a regular .docx, and this is a uh, employee evaluation and wage review. Uh, you know, so maybe it's every six months or every year the employee goes with, through a, a, a performance review with their management, right? So there's gonna be some sensitive information that's gonna be filled in. So we wanna upload this to the service as a document fingerprint. How do we do that? Well, we use PowerShell. And we're gonna run basically three commands to do this. Now currently, again, at the time of this video and at the time the documentation was written, this does not, you cannot create the fingerprint in the GUI, you have to do it via PowerShell. And the way you do this is we upload that original document to the service. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we're going to create a variable and we're just gonna have it equal get content and then I have my document saved off my C drive, and uh, we're just going to encode it here into the read count to zero. That's the first step. Once we create that variable, then we're gonna create a second variable, and we're gonna tell it new DLP fingerprint, and we're gonna tell it the file data uh, uh, option here, and then we're gonna use the first variable that we created, and then we're gonna give it a description. Finally, the next Thing that we're going to run here is we're going to create a new DLP sense of information type and we're going to call it employee review data. We're going to use the fingerprints that we just uploaded from above. So dash fingerprints and using that variable. We're going to give it a description and then that's it. So those three PowerShell uh, commands is what we're going to run. Now obviously you have to be PowerShell, uh, remote PowerShell into the security compliance service in Microsoft 365. So make sure you connect to that first. And once you're connected then you can run these. Once you run them, it creates a sense of information type in Microsoft 365. So if I go to compliance.microsoft.com and I click on data classification and I click on sense of information types, it's gonna be displayed here as a custom sense of information type called employee review data. Now notice I can't edit it because I created it with PowerShell, so I have to go back through PowerShell if I wanna view it. Folks, it's really that simple. This is extremely easy to create. The hard part is figuring out what we wanna do and why we wanna, why we wanna do it and making sure the, the templates and the documents and all those things properly uh, you know, match your requirements. Okay, and then also the hard part is obviously the DLP policies. Now that's why I'm gonna save DLP for another video. I'm gonna show you how to create a DLP policy for Exchange Online to prevent uh, that employee performance review document from being shared externally using the document fingerprint. So stay tuned for a video on that. And I'm also gonna create another video on using fingerprints in Microsoft Cloud App Security, Microsoft's CASB. Now this is really cool because then you can auto apply a sensitivity label to a document uh, if it is discovered to match that fingerprint. 
And then we can also do some advanced DLP stuff in MCAS with that document fingerprint. So I'm really excited to do this one. So stay tuned for that. It's going to, both of these videos will come out in the next couple of days. Okay, folks, hope you found some value in this. Uh, I always enjoy creating these. So if you did find value, give me a thumbs up and feel free to share this with your peers. Hopefully it can help someone else out there. And if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below in the video comments and we'll see everybody in the next video. Take care.